There's just a few things. Tell us what you do. You're from the UAE, right? Yes, Pastor. Uh, my name is John Samuel. John and Samuel. John That's Samuel. That's correct. I pastor a church in UAE, Dubai. It's called Anchorage. First of all, what's it like pastoring in, in Dubai? It, it looks like it's a gateway to uh, many countries. Many nationalities are there, and God is doing a wonderful job in UAE. Praise God. Yeah. So Praise I've God. always seen people from other countries who have come there for living, for probably finding their job, and uh, they're somewhere or the other placed there only by terms of their job. But then they find God in that place. Praise God. So tell us something. What's the, what's the theme of the word that you find most resonant um, and actually required in a place like the, the, where you are? If I have to say it is faith, Pastor. That's the word. The message of faith. Message of faith. I've seen many people receiving the Lord by when they trusted in the Lord and when God meets them in their expectation, they receive the Lord. Wonderful. I have, in, in our church, we have many people from different backgrounds, from different nations, from India, from different places. They're not of the same community or same class. When they come in with an expectation, an exact need is met. And most of them come in search of love. And when they come in and find love. In search of love. In search of love. What a journey. That's right. And when they come in and find love in a place like church, they're there. Praise Many God. of them have joined newly, Wonderful. and they are the first generation believers, and I'm pastoring them. That's it wonderful. is just the grace of God. It is. That's true. It is. Wonderful. 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 If you, if you wanted to say something to our audience today, what would you say? I would say, hold on to Jesus. Faith is the substance, is the now thing. As you were preaching right now, I received a lot from that. And the Bible says faith is more precious than gold, which is even tested by fire. And when impurities leave, it has got its own value. But then it is still of the worldly order. But faith is not of the worldly order. It is of the heavenly order. But you need to have that faith. And it has to be shown now. You're not going to wait to express your faith until Jesus comes because then you may not need it. Because it says, it says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. So you will express your faith today, in the now time. That's the message that I want to leave with you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, that's powerful. That's really powerful. Wonderful. Wow. In those few moments, you shared so many powerful truths, many amazing lines. What was going through your mind while you were speaking? That's um, like you were preaching, Pastor, a few minutes back, that faith is a response in the spirit to God's voice. When he speaks, we listen, and through his word, we we get faith. That's what the word records. It says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That means it's not just hearing the word of God, but hearing from the word of God. That means a voice that comes out of the word that we read. That means it does not happen without the Holy Spirit of God. He explains things to us. He brings uh, revelation in our hearts about him. When we read his word, when we give weightage to his word, and when we know that his word is life and it can minister to us, it really does. Hallelujah. Like you were sharing, these couple of months, God has been talking to me about the spirit of God working with the spirit of man. He wants to bypass 
the two faculties, the other two faculties as the physical and the soul to penetrate into the spirit and then write some things down, like inscribe certain things in the spirit so that we can run with that. I think many examples in the Bible we see, in one word if I should say, it is like we are declaring that we are invincible. How do we declare that we are invincible, that we are unbeatable? If it is not with the help of the Holy Spirit, if we don't give in for the work of the Holy Spirit, if we do not open up our spirit for the work of the Holy Spirit, I think we won't be able to declare that we are invincible because he is the one who gives us the power. Because even I was so astonished to see you, Pastor, ministering in the school of ministry where you were laying hands on 2,000 plus people Without the Spirit of God on you, in you, through you, you won't be able to do so much. I mean, in the physical flesh, I can imagine how tiresome it is going to be. But we are strengthened at times by His Spirit to do what He wants us to do. That's the empowering Spirit. He is the empowering Spirit. He comes, He gives us the power to accomplish certain things. And that's what is even recorded in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. When, when the power comes upon you, then it is the power to accomplish things. And Holy Spirit enables you to accomplish certain things that He wants you to do in life. And there, He wants to speak to your spirit. And you need to be open to the Holy Spirit to speak to you in your spirit. Whenever there is a vision that is laid in your spirit, then you will run after the vision. And I know, I'm sure, pastors doing the same thing. When, when God has put some things in His spirit, He goes after it. And like each of us can actually let the Holy Spirit work in us. Sometimes we are so stubborn that we don't let the Holy Spirit uh, inscribe that in our hearts. So uh, we tend to think in our mind saying that, oh, will I be able to do that? But you are actually weighing your own self. But do you weigh God? He says, with me you can do all things. With him who is in you. The spirit of power who is in you, he gets you to do things. And, and that's what I think uh, the Holy Spirit is there for us. And he enables us. He's the spirit of grace. And as we were talking about grace, we need to grow in grace. We need to uh, constantly grow in grace. If, I think if I remember right, it is uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, it talks about Jesus, by the grace of God, tasted death. So if Jesus needed grace, it's not like, it's not like by the grace of God, I got a car. It's not like that. It is nothing similar to that. But here it talks about tasting death by the grace of God. That means grace empowers grace strengthens and we need so much grace today and if we look to god for his grace he is he is lavishing you with grace he gives you enough grace he he enriches you with grace so that you will be able to do things you will be able to do the things of god and if you let the holy spirit work in you you will work with the mind of christ and that's the message for today. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor John Samuel. Thank you. Thank wow, you so wow, much, Pastor. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for the opportunity. Wow. Oh, you can imagine how far that word will go. And the transformation that it will bring. You talked about faith, you talked about the Holy Spirit, you talked about grace. Three sermons in three minutes. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Come on, come on. Jump those hands together and give the Lord a shout of victory. Prophesy to your, to your state. Prophesy to the situation. I am flying.